except then it was Shelley and it was Kathy. And it looks like I'll be returning to Kathy. Yeah, so one of the things that Asrod put on his tweet was that trust the coaching staff. They've made a great job in these map bans. I think for Ents to take Wild back to a map that they lost on yesterday, and Wild is such a new roster that they won't have been able to change barely anything. Ents are knowing exactly what's coming for them. It's obviously Wild that have chosen to go to the map. And I think what's curious for me, the second bit that's curious for me, is that Ents had the choice of starting side and have chose attack. Now I've got a stat. Ents, when they were Team Valor, played stage two LCQs against Eminem. Eight attacks they, they tried to win, they won zero. They had three attacks yesterday, they won zero. They currently haven't won an attack inside the official tier one circuit yet yet have chosen to go attack onto Cafe. I do think it makes a little bit of sense though, because they're putting themselves in uncomfortable shoes to begin a bit. They don't have that excuse of, okay, we can have a nice slow start on defense. Now you actually have to take, well, you need to take the reins. Like there's nobody who's gonna change this except for you as a team. So they're putting themselves in an uncomfortable situation, trying to solve that. And I think it's a good thing. I spoke to Actor, their coach before, and he said that, oh yeah, we were uncomfortable. It was stress and all of this stuff, but He's expecting a lot more today, and now he's putting them in a spot where, go prove it to me. That's what I think they've done. Go prove it to me. Show me what you got. It's giving a bit trusty process here, especially with what we've heard so far from that team with the six-man roster. But you touched upon the pressure a little bit. Um, having to change that in less than 24 hours is going to be really difficult. I don't know if it will, actually, because that was the first game. They know it. Shit happens. Genuinely, shit happens. It, it, you, you can't go in and every time you just have a, oh, yeah, we're going to have a magical debut. Well, they didn't have that. The stress got to them. We just allowed that. They, they, I, I guarantee it to you. Players at this level, they will be okay with losing a game. It will sting. I wouldn't sleep when I lost a game, but you let go of it and you need realize there's a new game tomorrow. That's where we can win another three points. Yeah. And if they get three points today, they put themselves in a great position to be in on the I, was, I just wanted to make a comment on that, actually. Is the context of who wins today, if, you know, if predictions are to be believed on the balance of things, I think most people across, you know, the whole scene would have put these two teams in kind of the bottom quarter, the bottom yeah. third. If they want to achieve higher than that, this is the team that they need to beat. Like, this is already a huge, I don't want to say it because it's been one day, but this is already a huge bottom of the table clash. So in, in their own way, for the three points here today is massive for whoever takes it. As a sense right now, yeah, it is a bit of a bottom of the uh, clash of the bottom rather. But then which team is going to come out um, victorious out of this matchup? Who do we think is going to win this one? Uh, you go first, Jack. Why, are you just going to disagree with whichever one Yeah, pretty choose? much. Okay, uh, flip a coin. Um, I'm going to say Ents, because I think they've taken a very smart decision to go to Cafe. I think that will be, they will have watched a game yesterday, identified a whole host of wild weaknesses and be completely ready for Cafe. Okay, I'm not going to disagree with you. And the reason <laughs> for it simply is that when I spoke to Akhtar and seeing all, that, all these good words that ha he has inside of the French scene, if you have a coach with that pedigree, I think that they have so much power yeah. and mental like grip on their players that they can change things around in a day. I genuinely believe that. So if he is as good as people say, I think Ants will win today. Thinking back about the playstyle that we talked about as well, of course, for Wild, what we've seen from them yesterday, uh, we're going to the same map essentially, so what's that going to mean for them? It just means that Jack said that they, he doesn't think that they've changed many things. I think that they probably have changed one or two defense strats, most likely. Attack, maybe not so much, because that's much harder to practice in. A new defense you can just put on paper, talk about these are the reactions we have, and this is the thought process that we have in our defense. You can't really do that in attack, because you need more timing practice, and you need to make sure you don't miss flashbangs or smokes or candelas or whatever you play. So attacks are much harder to change, but I think that we can see one or two new defenses just to spice things up. I'm just hoping that they let Lolo loose. Yeah. He showed yesterday he's got a bit of talent, and I can't say that sentence again, so don't <laughs> ask me to. He showed yesterday he's got the talent, but was maybe a little bit reined in. I want to see him be set free, because he was a player that was long overdue, that step up into tier one. So I'm hoping today that he actually goes and takes control of the game. So in a sentence, you got to say three times and see whether it breaks. Loose. Yeah. Let Lolo <laughs> loose. Let Lolo loose. <laughs> to be fair, did a really good I job know, I did that. it really well. Just not the first time. I completely break, screwed uh, that up. Didn't break your tongue, so, so that's very good. Time. You mm. said that three times, I won three world championships. You never got relegated. I did. Wait. Over I don't here. know if that's something to brag about. <laughs> Anyways, we have everything that we need to know to get you into this game. Now, all we need are two casters to talk us through this game. And for today, that'll be Hap and Fluke joining us. How are you two feeling on this very first day for you two with Europe League in 2024? Excited. I want to get back into it. I, I uh, yeah. I mean, we saw what happened in Brazil. We saw what happened to our region. And I think it's time we start to hit the hammer back. And it starts here.
I mean, we were one round away from knocking out the champions, you know, like third and fourth place teams. So really excited to see what all the new additions can do in the league, most importantly. See, you're holding strong onto that Copium hat there. I mean, <laughs> we should probably do that too here. We don't have the Copium of the reigning world champions anymore, but at least we have that in the back of our minds. But of course, for right now, we have Enz going up against Wild. And that'll be yours to take. Thank you very much, Anne. And it will be us to take it away the first time. We're having a map double down, and it's the same team that's decided to go there here into Cafe Dostoevsky. I'm Fluke. Somewhere over there is Hap. On the other side of the sea yep, in the Netherlands, the yes. No, uh, yeah, we are, we are going back into Cafe, and it is going to be that question of what can they change? What can they bring differently? Because obviously, uh, we, we've, seen, we've seen what happened yesterday and, you know, Ants have been really struggling overall also during the Malta series. So let's see um, what they've brought, what they've cooked up here. And so we are soon headed into Gaffer. Yeah, we find our way into, I guess, is the sort of debate here is fresh teams going back to back on a map. How much could you have possibly changed? If you're well rehearsed, if you know each other very well, you look at like a different team. You can look like an entirely different shape. You don't just have a strat A or a strat B. You're hitting C, D, E, F. You, you can keep that sort of going. Here, it's a sort of fresh set of players. Yeah, they have some experience, but you have to look at how this team has come together, how it's been forged, the players that have been brought in to fill specific roles that have otherwise drifted to other teams. And then also the sort of changing of the navigational guard of Nello stepping in, bringing a lot of IGL experience, bringing a lot of that sort of backline creative control and how that operates with a team that, you know, Wild, once upon a time, was a very surprisingly striking force. Yeah, of course, they came in last uh, season and they were, they were instantly, you know, putting some, some eyes towards them as they had some incredible starts to the season here and there. Of course, they made some uh, some giant changes. Uh, only two of the players remain who used to be on that roster after basically everybody had to uh, retrial for their spot. And because of that, it became kind of like a, a question mark again, right? Like, how are they going to be performing um, when we do get back into official play? I think that's always a, a big one that is, uh, is going to be upon those teams when such decisions do get made. Especially because they found some success. Of course, they didn't manage to qualify for the major, which was probably the goal. Um, it's not like they, you know, they were they were, you know, at the bottom of the of the scoreboards, and you know, back then they also won like Rainbow Rumble stuff like that. The the classic, classic. Was Rainbow Rumble the one that had a belt? Yes, that was, was it the, the one that had a belt, belt before NAL. Yes, the one not before NAL indeed. Stir that little little <laughs> pot. Not to, not to cook that on the burner, but they did. They also actually had two professional wrestlers coming to the studio as well. And Tom J. Sherlock. Um, I don't know if Five he's a professional wrestler, but I think he could be. I mean, he's always there, right? It's like, you know, no matter who shows up, if it's professional golfers or uh, wrestlers, Tom J. is always among, it's like he can do he'd everything. He's up for the good, he's up for the good swing. Right, who should be up for the good swing? To be honest, my eyes are on Kanto for this showdown. He was, I think, statistically the lowest rated player of players that played yesterday. And you're in a showdown here where a couple of Ents players have the top potential. Yes, they talk about it. It's technically a six-man roster. You never really know the surprise that you're going to get until the rosters get locked on the day. So you sort of change and tweak your ideas of approach. But a player like Kanto, whose job is to get in and get bodies down, or in this case, try and find these first fights and swing into it, it's going to be a bit of an eyes on here. Ents, top down control, very quick play of Claymores on towards Brown, but Wild aren't contesting any of the top two floors of this map. It's still important though that you use that time wisely as uh, as ends and make sure that you're not struggling too much in that top four, trying to drone things out. You start to instantly work on the verticality as you see out here with the ram, with the Google drones, of course, the skeleton key on the buck. Just making sure all that verticality is out there it really makes it difficult for the players a while to have a safe position inside the actual site where they cannot be challenged from a vertical angle. Now, Nello is using some of these Kiba barriers to try and, and, and stop the bleeding on the actual side. There's some good drone work actually being done by Ents here. Kento might find himself into a fight soon, and he loses it out to Nako. 
As they're trying to just get a bit of a read on towards the player on VIP and Cocktail, they're hoping they can sort of do enough to push the pressure and the, uh, and the sort of position of the players further and further back. Obviously, Kanto's gone. Packable is almost following Lolo. One of the two that had a bit of an outstanding performance yesterday gets the first, but instantly traded out. Packable found as well a triple kill. Beneko here on the lead in, leading just Teb, one of the two Italian stallions across the roster, and Nello, the Croatian sensation, onto the back line, waiting for, well, I guess the French team to show up, but they've gone back to droning. They know they have the body advantage. They have a huge amount of time advantage as well. Skies, a slow creep round. Gets the first pick, a heavy hammer hit. There's two for Teb. Just gonna slow down for a second here. Ents, they still have time. They've got control of the side on the back end. They could try and slip by a freezer in towards just planting on towards sink potentially or just the back of the chassis. Teb's getting the information of the cover from the camera itself. They're not entirely sure where he is. There's the rotation. Nako just popped over towards coffee on the opposite end and the plant will be confirmed. Attackers are now all the pressure We're onto the side of Teb here. They're slowly eking approach their way down onto the side of red. They're looking for the rotate on towards freezer. They just not giving them anything here. I was going to say they might pop their heads up, but instead they're playing this so hard close to their chest here. Teb is being off, but not a single fight. They know what he's capable of with this heavy hitting DMR. He hasn't been able to get any ground. He's got 20 seconds. The rotate on his left is about to prove a bit of a nightmare. There's the first fight. There's the rotate. And then it's evil. Get the swing around there and get the opening round. Now. Uh. I will say, I'm not sure if people at home can currently hear Hap, so I will keep going. Um, so we'll hopefully have the Dutchman back in. But it was a great first round there from Entz. What we saw was a good understanding of exactly what they talked about on the desk, where they said, look, this is a roster of Wild. They played Cafe yesterday. They've brought themselves back into it today, and you're looking at an understanding of we can just play this game again. They don't have time to tweak things. They don't have time to change things. The ability to get in and get full control of the top two sets of stairs and, and the top two floors comes off the back of having the prerequisite of watching the board, having the prerequisite of getting the drone in and getting themselves a good solid sort of idea across everything. That is not just built in drone game. And this is a sort of worrying clarion call here for a while. Yeah, I was really looking forward to this game, uh, especially, you know, Ants uh, didn't really have the best of performances during Melta, not during their first game either, and I'm like, Attackers okay, so, you know, like, this is a real good benchmark game for them, you know, not not when they're up uh, at the first game. Jiggle's going to be out of the way right now that they're playing back-to-back -back cafe, uh, having the option to, to look at what went wrong, what they need to do better, and now... They get that very first round. You just want to see more of that come through. You want to, you want to see them succeed. Also, slightly happy considering you know Riker's made it to uh, to EUL. He's the probably the only Luxembourgian player that I've ever seen. See, just like I, I cannot recall anybody else. Is that part of the Benelux? It's part of the Benelux. Yeah. Oh, who he would have known that you're a fan of the flag behind your He's head? He's actually never played Benelux. He's always Ooh. played in the French league. Tab. Now, trying to find themselves on the tip of the fight here. They were a little bit late to the party before, and by the time that they'd been able to start getting into the bodies count, the bodies had already killed all of their friends. Gets the drop on the rotate, pulls themselves back. They're being quite aggressive against here, the top of the hold. And Pactal escapes as well as Ox. A little too late for the swing round there onto Heaven. So instead drops down and Gets a bit of control, slower than before, but obviously there's generally less you have to get your hands on here. Good pressure over the top. Snakeo finds himself into a bit of a fight with Lolo, he's backing himself into the freezer. Basically finding himself in a do or die situation here. There's no real way out. Peckville close to the window, almost got himself shut off as well. And there's Lolo, just again, gets spotted, misses the shot, someone actually inside will find the very first, but instantly afterwards, taken down, a double kill coming in from Skies. Lolo, he has been able to have these little moments, as Fresh sort of talked about on the desk, he Defender showed exposed. the start of star quality, but wasn't able to shine as brightly yet. Kanto knocked out twice in a row, he's been able to not have the impact here. Teb is holding and gets 
the surprise strike onto Skies. Missed moment of Mistro, and they'll be beating themselves up about that because even though there's 50 seconds of a round left, the hand Swapping over legs. the sort of body count and the man count, especially with how fervently they were droning on the round before. Attackers oh, have recovered I mean, their diffuser. But luckily for them, you assume the Havana's done most of the work, but Frenchy here against Nello. How aware is Nello? They seem to be very aware of his positioning. Azos is baiting the sound of the goo mines, but it's drawing a lot of attention and focus, easily caught by the man who entered this play day with the highest cost, Frenchy. All right, you're out. Not going to find anything. No, where Packbull is now. The two and three is going aggressive because he has to. We'll find one, but instantly shut down Teb. Trying to retake the verticality. He needs to find a uh, the win on that five, but he loses it out. In the meantime, the diffuser is going to be planted. They should have the cover ready, but they're both horizontal now. Azix, though, still coming out on top, still securing that round right after the diffuser goes down, finding himself with a 2-0 lead. Hence, the second was a little bit more touch and go than the previous round. The first was solid control, a solid lock-in. And there, you could see that they had moments of understanding, whether it was because Wild were playing a little bit of the aggro game. Pack ball, that's twice in a row he's run out of the building. And well, he didn't get punished this time around. But it sort of shows the game that Wild has to play here, which is... Let's send it. Let's get ourselves into these positions. They might not expect to get ourselves putting up these fights. Lolo here, the first instantly caught by the follow on the trade. Why he starts sprinting across the middle of the top four, I'm not entirely sure. Tab, again, drop punishment. It's the difference. They had no idea Tab was there. They may as well have had see-through, you know, pillars there to know about Nello. Oh. About the sprinting thing, it might have been like I got a kill, maybe have a way out now, not knowing that the rest of the team was stacked up there. Because, of course, the other player, you know, uh, spread over the bar as well. So probably was going to be afraid that if he would have stuck in a situation, he would have uh, fell either way. But maybe it would be better indeed to just go out and swing uh, rather than sprinting. Here you go. We will be headed towards mining. Yep. Up towards... And I'm going to say the wobbliest site. What did you say? More wobbly throughout the days. And we've seen it with their side as well. I was just this side is actually though. seeing quite some play. <laughs> I, was, I was setting you up. Do you know who I was mainly actually setting up for that? Tim. Who were you setting up for it? Betraying yeah. his trust. How dare he? Honestly. Lolo! Lolo is this time, the one that's stepping up to the fight immediately, seeing if they can try and find it all against the piano windows. There's also a little bit of safety on towards Whiskey, but with these keeper barriers, now you might be thinking, hey, Eagle Snap, you can shoot through those now. If you have, you know, still have a cost of utility, it's a lot of bullets to get through. Think of how many times you've seen players late in a round not have many sort of max clips left in their pockets. It's easier if they've turned around. Less so if there's instantly another Italian to pop up and put you down. There's a second for Tab. A little bit of success there for the Pulse. Back down towards the bottom of white. A great opening coming through there. They definitely need that after how the previous two rounds have gone. Fall back from Pactel as well towards the horizontal part of the side, leaving just Kanto up here. Manages to find a kill onto Azix and reinforcing the extra man count that they already had. Marcos now trying to put in some pressure, knows one of the uh, one of them is going to be on that train. Flashbangs coming through, they need to collapse together here, but it's always a bit difficult, especially with the vertical. It's stepped up, finds one, not quite the second. This guy's definitely aware of the fact that there's someone out there now. And you see him looking horizontally as well. Someone could be coming up wide, someone could be coming up red to make the right decisions here, but it's a one four situation. Looks like Wild should be able to lock this one off with too, without too much effort here. Just make sure that they play into the time right now. He's always a player with a huge amount of potential, Teb, and he sort of showed it on Wild, even with the previous roster, where they had players that might have been the sort of top of the KD board. He was never that far behind, and now he's sort of taking the tip of that role here and stepping in. Anto, able to get one before he was traded and taken off the board this time round, but with 30 seconds and a Havana still on the top floor trying to break their way down. You can see the rotates come through on the back end. They've got themselves structured around the mining side. Dining becomes a little bit of a shooting gallery if you try and slip in. There's a single player into the back end of it, but at this point again, still not quite taking out cams. Packed below under a table. 
Gets the last for dinner and gets the first round for Wild. A well-needed one. As, uh, of course, playing on the defense. <clears throat> we saw that during a side, we, we, we got that little, you know, defender side at meta coming through. At some point, it was 60% of the rounds went to defense. Now that slowed down slide, I guess we went to playoffs. That was on LAN, however. Um, things might change slightly when we're online. The game is just slightly different. Just in how it plays out. Of course, ping difference is always uh, going to be a factor. We don't have that on LAN. You would still expect on a map like Cafe, um, a 3-3 three -three split or a 4-2 split in favor of the defense. And ends finding themselves with two rounds already is going to be huge news for them, especially considering how their game went yesterday. From this point, Wild, how do you keep stepping in? Because let's be honest, the only one stepping up at the minute really is Tab over these past couple of rounds. They had the instant response. The ability to get two kills at top white whilst they've just lost somebody on white corridor. They know that there's pressure on towards the white window, back of sort of eastern front as well. He really is doing his best to sort of hold on to Wild's money for the moment, but they do desperately need somebody to try and find a little bit of the same success here. It cannot just be that sort of balance of hope. Pop himself all the way off. Nako goes hunting, but Kanto has otherwise already slipped his way at least one story up. Still with the Claymores here and the expectation of any coverage on a jump. A bit of the bait of play. Tebs on the top story whiskey window as well. They're really hoping to get something surprising here, but not entirely worth the risk. How lucky will Teb get, though? It's going to go for the jump out, though. I mean, he's, he's definitely eyeing it up, but the claimers were set down. Surely Kent has called that out. Like, claimers have been put down. Might be able to get one out of it. It's not what you're playing for here, Teb. Again, going aggressive. Starting to rotate out. Has been droned, so... Position no needs to try and play it as careful as it possibly can, but those keeper barriers. You now you can shoot them now with the actual bullets and destroy it that way. So he's definitely not safe. There he goes. It blows up completely blind. Oh. Oh, but and get shut down by Rykos. I mean, he was doing his best, but against an onslaught of utility, it sort of raises that question and asks at the start of this round is what happens if not Teb? Because now, with him being the first body gone, with all of the fresh the candelas are putting their way in towards the top of the red as the rotates come through from back pull down. Kanto finds the one on the run out on the white corridor window. But with Frenchie watching and desperately waiting for that barb to make a sound before he gets the follow up swing, Kanto knows he can't really take a step further. But it is a one versus one isolated, leaving a three versus three on towards the site itself. At some point, the pressure of time is going to be something that befalls the attackers. Back pull gets another. Azox gets removed from the player underneath. He can rotate and maybe try and help Kanto's lead in. And suddenly there's a lot of pressure here onto Ents. There's a lot of the evil eyes out there still that are giving away so much information towards the defense, which makes it a bit tricky to actually go for. Don't really want to commit. Lolo playing closer on the bathroom as well. Is about to have a great swing into piano. The bulletproof is calling out for him. He leads into one, trying to get into the second as well. He knows exactly where he's going because of the camera. Still loses out eventually though, but Skies, the last one standing in a 1v3. He has the bathroom. He has the opportunity to go into the freezer. But again, there's so much information out there now that they need to play around and Nello swings around wide with the L that manages to find himself that final kill and the score is equalized. By the name Nello, sometimes it's good to stay out the press and sometimes not so much, but him starting to have an impact as well as a sort of backline player. We know that historically he's been on these rosters like X M and M where there is a lot of superstar gunners and he sort of holds down the fort and lets the kids go and kill. Here, him being able to keep that killing up is sometimes the make or break of how his teams have won or lost in the past. Kanto showing up, went, eventually wins out the fight against Frenchie. They were sort of holding each other at an impasse for I think about a minute on white stairs. But then at that point, as I said, time is that cruel, cruel mistress and Frenchie had to make a move and unfortunately the wrong move led to the finishman getting the kill. Tab here, missing the, uh, the Kiva. Slightly off with the crosshair there, was completely blinded, so couldn't adjust either. 
let two is lost. And I mean, he was, he was playing that in a suicide position, right? Like his goal was always to, to live or die in there and hope to waste as much time, but more importantly, try and get some bodies as he's playing around it. Attackers are moving out to locate a Phil to do so. Eventually, the NFL uh, round still going wild way there, so not too big of a trouble. As we're headed back down towards the basement. I did say up this time, you know. You didn't say going down. Right. Yeah. Going down, 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 down. It's not basement actually, it's ground floor. Yeah, it's a ground floor. Well, it's not not a basement. It's basement. still messed up. You live in a dream world, Pat. I would hate to see what kind of houses you build in house building games. Heavy protection here. And they've got themselves ready for anybody that tries to get onto bakery because well, maybe they were forced out there quite quick. You would think, no, Teb was the Swapping last back. line of defense there. So, essentially just a heavy setup there that Ents don't want to foil and trouble with the second time round. He is slower clear over these top floors so far, but now they're ready to start getting some of the destruction done. Not hugely slow, only the difference of about five to 10 seconds, but still. They're well aware of a caution now that must be paid towards this game where Wilds have definitely stepped up over the past couple rounds. This was one of the more convincing rounds in terms of the fact that they managed to get quite some control off. Of course, lost two more players after that. But they managed to get that plan down, eventually, you know, lock it off and base in el uh, eliminations. See if they can repeat them. Last time it was basically a 3k from the outside from Naquel. Just playing in this exact same position. Just finding people running out, finding people rotating through. Not having any of that right now. And the quick vertical openings have already made it quite difficult for the defenders to actually play in the sun. So you see a bunch of them outside of it. It's going to be up to like Nako, for example, to try and oh. work that as Rikos drops hot, finds a kill from the freezer, and that opens things up. There's Nello apart, and suddenly there's a very big bit of control that's fallen into the hands of Ents. It looked like it was slow and cautious and wild now. They've got to sort of stress themselves because, well, they don't even have the site. All of them were shepherded off, pushed away, apart from Nello. Now there is one player inside the site, and he is not wearing wild colors. So if they can force one more kill, suddenly they've got all of the freezer control. They can maybe try and angle a plant. That is the pressure they're trying to put here. Now, Rifles just has to hold on and survive. Make sure they don't get a retake and make sure they can't find their way in from the double door. Kanto, he's able to get a scrape on. His pack will get a kill on the back. It's saving Private Lolo at the minute. And well, he's able to save himself. Swings out for two. Cannot get the scrape onto the third. Both of them are... Sort of damaged and scratched. Lolo a little bit more. Azox is quickly rotating. They have the hot pings. The pistol gets the confirmation from Frenchie, but look at the time left. Teb, he wants to taste, pulls himself back, but there's only 10 seconds. He's going to try and hold on. Forces into a one versus one here as they go for the plant. Hits Azox once. Cannot get the cover onto the second player. He's wasting as much time. Missed the ping. They swing their way back round. Has to lead in, but now he's too late. Gets the pistol onto one. It's the R4C on the back of Azox that just locks in the end of that round. It was such a chaotic round out there, Remy. And I mean, it's, it's mostly down to Lolo with the fact that he was playing from VIP, able to find those two kills, almost a third, as he was quite literally just swapping from left, right and center in between the three different points he was getting pressured from. He almost saved that round playing from VIP out there. It is still going to be ends that will find themselves a victorious in the end on that site. Again, as they've played it and won it before. Now the question is, where do we go? Is it going to be fireplace mining? You know, they've played there, they've won it. One of the sort of risks you're looking at right now, and you can see why they adapted towards the Goyo, they adapted towards the sort of delay is the handy handy death you get a very great readout of exact seconds when things happen in the plants 19 seconds left in the first round five seconds left in the second round and that even left the wilds can work out where things are going on from ends where they can try and press them. cannot otherwise get a connection things are very late on the ends attack but at the minute hence they have done better than they did yesterday. Wild, they're still one round short of what they're able to make connect here yesterday. 
with Tev going down first. I sort of talked about the importance of the player in a couple of the rounds that they were bitterly fighting back. And since then, unfortunately, his, his name removed pretty early. It was a good swing, though. Like, they've realized there's no one really else downstairs. You just had the opportunity to walk in freely, get that kill, and exit the building again. Because, you know, the thing is, you're pretty much safe outside. As soon as you go inside as an attacker, there's so many angles that you need to worry about. So if you just quickly hop in, get a kill, and go back out, that's just free. You don't have to worry about it, especially if it's, you know, the bottom floor. You don't really need control of it. Verticality, uh, bottom up, it's not really that big uh, of a part uh, for this side that they're going to for right now. So usually what you see is that top-down approach, which is what they're actually going for right now after they have the opening kill. Some castle barricades, though, are making things a little bit difficult here and there. I have to uh, to get those removed before we do see a full flesh take. Akbul, he was able to escape last time he was playing this position. You wonder if they're going to give him the same grace. Misses out. An opportunity to fight a player. Nello gets bitten himself and somehow slinks away. Nako does find Pactful on the top. No rotate out of there this time round. The prep C4 won't quite have the connection. Nello almost gets bitten again, but he's able to flip his way around. Kanto, he wants to do a little bit of a hopeful swing. And there it is, straight through the track stingers. Retakes. The vertical control. He's about to find a fight itself, but without the intel, here. without that clarity, they now have to go for a forceful and aggressive retake. Time has been that cruel moment. Lolo and Nello win out one apiece inside the site. Nello does get traded eventually. It's two versus two. They've just sort of gone, well, no one's on the site itself. Let's see if we can sort of grab on and get the lock in. Lolo has to rotate up. Kanto has to rotate down. They've missed out this moment. They've gone for the swing. Rykos is the cover of post bond and Frenchie. He's able to escape. Lolo does get the end of him. But how much here can Rykos hold on? And so he's going to rotate his way around, probably towards the pillar side and the pillar door to make sure they don't drop into the fight itself. They're fading the motion. There's one. That heavy hitting French DMR, Kanto. He's able to get the follow up. And a slow start ends in a very strong finish for this half for Kanto Rakete. Yes, little 3-3, three, three, of course, that uh, was suspect or at least expected that while needed to get at a bare minimum here. So they've, they've done that, but it was a tougher fight than they maybe would have wanted to. They were on the back foot for quite a lot of those rounds. Even there, you know, the plan does go down and it's always a bit of a like a, a moment for the defense when that happens because suddenly the time is no longer your friend is starting to count against you. This time... Again, that clutch coming out there from Kanto, managing to uh, to bring it back. Important, especially, you know, when he when he retook that top floor as well. Um, basically took out one of the winning conditions from the defense at that point. Now makes his halftime. We'll be having the site top soon, so completely different kind of pace coming out for these teams. Suddenly, you know, where, where Enz was in the attack, they now need to wait for Wild to make their first moves. This becomes that sort of question as a game of two halves here because, you know, we've talked about how Ents, and they talked about it on the desk, haven't been fantastic on the attack side. Defense is where they've really been able to get a little bit more sort of safety and comfort. We talked about, you know, coming into this map where they sort of were yesterday, the, the performance that they had on Cafe Wild and how it's sort of doubled down here as the immediate follow through. Where are you more likely to learn sort of questions of them. Obviously, you know, it was the defense side was where we saw most of it. We saw failed attacks. I think it's it's fair to get the break here, but you're against BDS here. The Wild almost have a bit of a warm-up on their attacks. There might even be a little bit of strength that comes from being able to sort of get right back in the attacking momentum. Holly, it's not an operator we do see a lot of. Of course, this game is... Uh... About headshots often, people prefer the high rate of fire, low recoil kind of guns. We just have a bit of an easier time taking out those heads. Now the CSRX is actually quite a unique weapon as it, you know, it basically is a, a one shot down weapon in, in most cases. Sure when they, oh, okay, try to shoot off the, uh, the things there. Oh, Nico almost loses his life and he messed up the Kiba barrier. 
somehow escapes out there. That should have been a lock off. And the C4 will find Teb. Well, Another one coming through from Rykos. I mean, somehow, Wild have sort of fumbled that there. They had the catch on to one. He entirely struggled. They were missing the player and the catch on Whiskey Window itself. They're able to strike their way across in the same second here. Kanto's trying to pick up the pieces, but whatever they want to do with the Carly. Nothing's going to happen now. Nello does find one from the top of the skylight. Nako isn't far away. Well, there I meant both apparently in time and in health, as he's instantly picked up by Lolo. So it's suddenly back even, but even then, wild. They probably should have had a much cleaner control there. Not entirely sure what happened to the death of Tab. Recovered the bomb diffuser. It's not just going to be dead. It's also like, look at the utility they have left. Two grenades, well, they're not as they used to be anymore. So it's not like guaranteed kills. If you start fishing from below, like you're not going to find anything if you start doing that. Air jab, flashbang. We do have like some extra uh, Excarals left, but the mirror windows are still out there. Those are going to be a real issue if you want to go for the plant that they're currently seeming to eye up. So you got to make something happen there. You got to work around it one way or another. The nitro cells being prepared from below as well, I believe, as we do see a rotation coming in from Rykos. Snello slowly creeping himself into the side. Are they aware where well, the flashbang is being tossed out? They could definitely see that one coming. So they know the plant coming through the down already there. The diffuser is going to be covered by that for the county. Kanto needing to retake as he gets a beautiful shot onto the player on the mirror window there. A bit of an overstep from the uh, defender out. Kanto now finds that diffuser, digs in a little bit deeper, making sure that the cocktail balcony is going to be safe with 13 seconds as the last member standing. Will he go for kills or will he go for the defuse instead? Oh, well, he gets shut down by Frenchy, and that means Ent will be able to find that round, but well, find themselves back into it for a moment there. I mean, he didn't really have a choice. At that point, he, they, they, you know, there's 14 seconds left. They were trying desperately to get into the core of the hole. The mirror windows gave them a bit of width, and it was sort of like, okay, we don't have any other sight, but we have eyes onto it and some pings. Let's play against their pressure. Something that Ents were pretty good at converting the previous time round into their favor here. You know, it's the teething issues of new rosters. It's the learning period that you can sort of see in action here from the side and the cover a while. There's little moments to catch, as I said, around the piano rotate, the play there, and a roster that's done the sort of mistakes on that in these moments. Would have been able to get the end here. Spray through. There should have been just that instant connection from the opposite. C4 under, gets the drop on Pinello. Great. Free fire there from Kanto, but at this point, when you've got 10 seconds, they're rotating around behind you as well. And what are you really supposed to do? 10 seconds to insertion. And to manage to find one, and of course, they're they're looking to find that first victory inside of EUL. Um, I mean, who wouldn't be looking for a victory if you're playing out here? They had a bit of a disappointing start yesterday. Their Malta run was kind of disappointing as well for themselves. So starting off like this is definitely going to be feeding them with some confidence, especially with some of the plays that these players have been making. They can keep that up. They could become a real dangerous team. I mean, you heard the desk say it before, everybody could be challenging for those major spots. Especially if, you know, the, the newest team on the block. Tossing AMP grenade! Raider in the blinds. Lolo's able to get the pinch there onto Rykos, but instantly oh, drops round behind the kit. Inside the site, and they have a couple of questions about what they're entirely trying to get trending there with the pace, but without that control, without that watch, was Nello just turning in a battle the wrong way for them to be able to make that position? Yeah, the only place he can watch now is Cam's tab swings in, but instantly locked out here they tried to do a sneaky quick play but otherwise it has entirely gone away from them you assume a jump out behind them this feels a little bit sanctioned now as Nako gets the end of it and then they're just turning it up round after round here definitely a good round coming in from them there and just you see the aggression, all right? I was talking about how they build confidence as they as they get going. Again, I don't know what was happening with Wild there. The two people in quickly towards the site. Where was the cover on the person jumping? Like you would, you would expect to have some control at least. Not the case. And Nello found himself around pillars just momentarily after. So like, was he just behind and missed the opportunity to go for the kill? 
or what happened there. Of course, we don't have that full insight, but that seemed like a bit of a, a fumble during that round. They wanted to go quick. They had the entry. They had the site somewhat cleared out that way. And then boom from above. It's the moment that they take their tag time out. It's the moment that they start to try and piece together exactly what's going wrong. As you said, unfortunately, we don't get the full taste of just what Nello was watching, just what he was fighting. I can only assume he was engaged because if you're in that position and you're not quite able to get the sort of better understanding of where they're rotating, where they're moving, what they're putting pressure onto, sort of a fool on you moment, right? It's sort of a miss. But if they had pulled off that one catch, if there had been that one bit of difference there, on the rotate, yeah. suddenly they got the kid inside sight. They're trying to find, the I would say, the start of a sneaky plant. It would have been a one-to-one -one trace, generally performed across. Instead, you're at a bit of a sort of deadlock. They've retaken the site. They now have the kit. They still have vertical, and you are all out of position. It's the gamble, right? It's the gamble of a rush. Yeah. But that's it. It felt like a quick play, but not a fully committed one. You get two Ten players trying left. to go in quick towards the site. They found themselves there. The rest of the team just wasn't ready for that. Five seconds left. Or they did, weren't watching the angles that actually mattered at that point. I mean, we had someone outside of the repel watching okay, vertical. But a drop already happened, and then, you know, that kind of ruined the entire round there for a while. But they just took their time out. It's, it's time to bounce back now for them. They need to just quickly, you know, regroup themselves, or at least they just did, and see if they can make these attacks stick. We're, we're headed towards the ground floor, towards the kitchen, service and cooking. See some incredible plays happen here, but the weakness of this side is the fact that it's almost completely openable from a vertical perspective. So if Wild do get control there, they can, you know, do their job, open up the Skeletor Key and the Rams, the site itself is going to be relatively clear. It might be one person out there. The rest should be in like the layering around it. At this point, Ents, one round away from getting themselves towards the map in series point, but with two defense sort of side wins and Nello suffering in the follow-up of that. Probably will get recollected. But still, to be caught by a C4 and you're on the top floor on this kitchen approach, it sort of shows the tragedy of Wild this game. I will be recovered. Reloading, cover me. At least I assume he will be. You saw someone run towards him and no one really in a position to challenge. But he's still wasting a lot of time and it is your buck as well who's supposed to open up vertically. We should still have those boogies, but Nello is going to be a lot less confident now going for these vertical challenges as, you know, as soon as he does swing, just a single bullet catches him. Boom, rounds over for him. Tab loses out on his drone there. To get some useful information, especially for a push later down wedding. They pulled themselves back a little bit closer towards the site itself, and Kanto finds Frenchies. So five versus three. Man doing as much work as possible, but with Lolo getting caught, Kanto suffering a bit of a wide swing there from the bottom of white. It read like it seems generally that's where the push is being sort of proposed oh, from on towards the back end. The super hour is gone, and the juggling against the soft. Dreykos is gone as well. Will he go up two stories is the question. Probably not now that he's lost another player inside the site. Teb just missed chance of a fight and engagement. Nello's a bit caught out. They know exactly what Rykos is trying to do at this point. He's taking a bit of a high risk here, hoping to get a bite before he can rotate his way back down, wasting as much time as possible. Should be aware of the fact that he's being watched now as they just keep swinging at him. Just doesn't know where the drone is until just now when he starts firing through the flower pot there. Nello will find Rykos. Sky's now finding himself in a 1v4. Not succeeding in that. Wow. Get themselves back on the board as they find themselves with an attack round right after the tactical timeout. Again, you know, they needed to uh, regroup themselves, see where things went wrong. I think this one was a lot more controlled. You actually had the flank watch out there, making sure there was no uh, surprise pop up, which we've seen quite a lot of actually so far from ends being successful against this wild. Now, as so we will be uh, getting back in to a very important round. And of course, every round is, is important. I know, I want to hear, I wanna hear why this one is important. Because if Ents win it, like the last, they'll be finding themselves up into a map point and a match so point. every down. round is important. Every round is important. <laughs> but like, if they lose this, then suddenly it's 5-5, five, five, and then, you know, the pressure could be turning just around again. So it's like, 
you're losing your buffer if you lose this one. And then suddenly you could be on the back foot right after. Yeah. So I mean, now they're still in control. If they lose this, then it's it's, it's an easy ball game. It, it was on the third side, technically. It was on the third place to play. Regardless of statistics at that point, you never know the comfort level of the team with their setups and how they like to engage their opponent. They, they can change when they stay base. This, this one did come down to a bit of a scrappy two versus two and there were mistakes at the lead-in of wild ground here. So you're wondering now if we'll get a bit of that taste of the team talk, sort of the part two of it here, of not only what they could adapt towards the round ahead, but what could they change with the rounds that have gone slightly away from them because one more engagement is their favor and that is probably well, it might not be entirely that round, but it's a lot closer to it than how close it was at the end there with the two versus two, 10 seconds. Watching and waiting for an approach here. Kanto gonna get himself open on the hatch of red. Don't get entirely caught out. Teb with the DMR, the rest of the work. Hopes he doesn't get caught. No Carly this time either. <laughs> I was really wondering what they're gonna do with that. Die, apparently. Getting rid of the, uh, uh, like, keeper barriers, considering, you know, like it's, um, Destructible by bullets now, so maybe you know caliber destruction coming through there. Right. I'm not really sure. Pretty happy to do it with the Havana pellets. It's a good use of them. You don't have the highest amount of sort of hard breach to do on this site, especially here. You you've got a lot of it open. Generally, it's not the old days where this was all sort of cemented and locked down as the swing round on towards piano side, and you play against 90 to 40 minutes. You have to. Try and still force these engagements and Kanto slowly gets his way tucked in inside the cabinet. I think there's a Valkyrie cam in there. Yeah, there is, but the glass hasn't been broken, so they've managed to get it in there some other way. It's pretty sneaky. That's yeah, pretty sneaky indeed. That's going to be giving away a lot of information. I was just going to say, like, usually we'd like use the x as well for the uh, mirror windows. We can actually use the S-charges as well to try and, and, and break them with that way. It's one actually being spotted out. IQ is on the board, so don't expect the other one to be up for too long. If it does, I would be amazed. Oh, that's a jump out from Rykos. Doesn't quite get anything done onto Lolo. And the entry kill with that will go towards Wild. Yeah, they put a bit of a risky strategy in there, but with a minute left, they're just trying to buy and waste as much time as possible, Skies. Holding onto the back of White, Kanto hasn't really moved from this position, but remember how ends ended their round was two players locked inside Freezer, so if they can keep that sort of open aware that's that end back line removed from the side and somehow slips out for 30 seconds how are they going to try and turn this into a successful execute here while kit makes a bit of a mad dash towards it nello is tucked and in but he doesn't quite feel safe yet he's gonna keep pushing all the way up to the bin bags the rotates coming underneath though they're pre-firing towards the default frenchy takes out back full and canto gets some of the cover a post plant but as else goes down in the meantime so it is currently Oh, just a one versus four. Azok still on the ground. Frenchy, no real way to get across the top. Instantly hit from the back end. Doesn't get anywhere close. Wild. Pull themselves back level with two rounds on the trot after the team talk. It's great for them. And with that now, they find themselves on 5-5. That's, that's, again, that, that important round where whoever wins this has the opportunity to go for the full point fight. And as we do have a, uh, a timeout coming out from Ents now, they also realize that, you know, something is maybe going wrong. It might be too much aggression right now, you know? Like, maybe Wild have read into that already for it. The drone game is is, is stronger as well. Like, you, you've seen it in sort of previous rounds where a flank is going to be attempted, but the drone is there, giving away the information. Figured out they were susceptible to these plans. So what do you say now? As you were an ends player. I have something in French. Yeah, I would, I would, I would guess so. Sacre bleu. Not sure how helpful that would be if that's your tactical timeout. Imagine calling a tactical timeout of your coach. All he says is sacre bleu. <laughs> <laughs> the coach probably wouldn't last very long. But uh, in that. Um, sort of the, the content piece that occasionally pops up between a lot of people, the French-speaking rosters especially, and I think it was Alamau, all chose Akhtar as the coach behind the team, I think. Um, there's something about his coaching staff that appeals. 
But who knows what the big brain has cooked up. We can only wait and see what has been cooked up. seconds left before insertion. Tactical timer now, as, you, as we just mentioned from ends. Let's remaining. see if they can uh, turn that around as well into uh, two consecutive rounds from their own side. I'll manage to get two from theirs. Two would be enough for ends to win this game. So it's up to a while to stop that from happening. But they're starting to build into a bit of momentum here and they're starting to outsmart ends slightly. Like, did they manage to just get a hold in the previous playstyle, which was pretty much aimed at spawn peaks, run out, jump out if you could. There's just more attention being paid towards it. Also, Kanto having an incredible game, especially if we compare him to uh, yesterday, where he only dropped two kills in the entire two I mean, game. compare him to the opening three rounds of this game. He struggled at the start. There was almost this worrying moment of, oh no, not again. I thought he better at the time. But then, since then, he's really stepped up and stepped in towards this. And I won't say too much more because the last time I stat about Teb and he's only been able to get one kill since. <laughs> But, as you said, it's only two rounds for Ents, it's two rounds for Wilds, just as much. And they're the ones with two of them on the trot as well. It doesn't matter if there's a team talk timeout, they get to continue that and sort of double down on the lessons learned here. Maybe it's a way to put more pressure onto the time itself, see if they can try and just reap a little bit more of the rewards. Onto the back, Nello. Getting the angles, forcing the players out from the sort of backline holes here. They're taking it sort of step by step. They don't want to suffer to the jump outs, the plays, the rotations that Nako's been able to make, or Brykos especially, in the previous couple of rounds. Already seeing the same amount of aggression so far coming now. We saw a spawn peak at the start, but that's about it. Azox, though, as the window gets open up, he's just waiting for a bit of a noise. He, he wants... Oh, the grenade comes out, swings in, gets himself removed. Tab using that right really well to dislocate the player out there, finds himself with the opening kill, and that's a great opportunity for Wild to now force themselves into a bit more control over the top. We see some drops heading in from Ents as well. Frenchy, the last remaining member left up here, is going to try and fight for his life and do whatever he can to waste as much time by bodies as well as possible. And Nitro comes out a second one as well, but that repel descends just quick enough to not be caught. Big repels, baby. Welcome to the new world. Flashes go out towards the back of Frenchy. He's just going to spray and free fire towards an angle, but he's not actually caught by any of it. But Nello's still able to catch the kill on the back. At that point, it was just a matter of sort of pressure, and he didn't really know which way to look. It's about Nako being able to sort of flank and roam his way before he's prepared for the play of the drones. Look at the time, though 20 seconds. All he has to do is slightly dishevel this push, and the round is theirs. The play of the grenade, the swing round, somehow, Teb! Wins it out against the pressure there. Now that's going to go for the kit plant in the same time. Packpool's holding onto this. The rotate Attackers up brown gets the, the kill onto Rakos. They cannot find it. Nako, too late to the party. Too late to Teb. Pulls back in. Now they have a lead, Wild. Now they have something to play for here because for the first time, Ents are on the back foot. Yeah, it's a slight lack of, of information on the site. We saw a retake happening over the top, but we also had a player around on the brown stairs, which of course was covered off by the door outside. That's where it kind of went wrong. And, you know, the swing on the white stairs, I totally understand. The repelling comes in. The movement is quite limited. You, you can no longer go any lateral movement. You're just, you're just going in forward. That's it. We're losing that one out. Very unfortunate. The fact that then the last two remaining players are on brown and on top. As the plant goes down, there was no way they could stop that from happening. So while I made the best out of that situation again, it's a fun bit of the early aggression, you know? You open up the window, you throw a grenade through, people start swinging you, and they find the kills on the back of that. Now with a huge kill as well, of course, with the player that was playing on the cocktail balcony. It was a very scrappy fight from either side. Nello took a bit of damage, but... And to stay alive and eventually clean it up, so... I don't think he really cared about that damage taken at that point. It's always that weird statement about the Nello-driven team that was said before when he was sort of on the, the Gunner roster, is if he's able to get himself an even KD, if he's able to get himself success in his fights, usually it means the rest of the plan is coming together. Not to say he's not a Gunner, obviously anyone at this level can shoot, but look at the Gunners he surrounds himself with all the time, and... 
And might not quite be the same sort of striking force as the old users and Solotov duo. However, there is always still room for that position and style of play. The attackers bombed their hatches dropped. Attackers have recovered their defeat. Which is slowly being opened up, doing that safely with those DMRs. Still think that's one of my like favorite changes they made. Uh like back when it happened that the DMRs could open up those hatches. Gives you a bit of extra versatility uh, versatility. As the evil eyes here just hunting down some of the drones. Just stopping the information from the attackers as much as they can. Castle barricades to be taken care of. The E1Ds going off as well to try and force something from the side of hands. A little bit of aggression. Excaros are being shut out from the player and Pixel. Falling back as well in the meantime. They're still holding on to the top four quite successfully. But for how much longer? When does this uh, horizontal pressure start coming through? No one's been able to get that opening engagement as of yet in the rounds that Wild's been able to win. It's come a lot later and Lolo almost finds it around a similar time, but it's Teb that gets the tail end of Nako. Just seems like over the past few rounds, Wild have 100 percented themselves on towards the understanding of Enter's game here, the sort of flip of the coin of how this map started and how we talked about the research, the knowledge, the doubling down on a map pick here. It might have been something that, as I said, has cost them because Wild's been able to warm their guns up against BDS attacking this map, and that really is the trialist by fieriest. I mean, before the tactical timeout that was taken by Wild, they only had two entry kills so far, and everything since has gone towards them. Ruckus with the outside swing gets two. Skies finds one as well, and the round just suddenly turns upside down as Kanto's trying to push himself into the freezer, still trying to go for a bit of a salvage, but he's walking right into Frenchy. Nello, the last one standing, gets shut down as well. And suddenly we're going to overtime. I'm kind of out of nowhere. It out of was nowhere. Out of absolutely nowhere. There was the run out on the sort of snow door. Gets you the double. Gets you the spray all the way across. But for all the compliments that I had paid, oh, I don't know, 15 seconds before that happened towards Wild seemingly to have got the 100% yeah. lock in. No, nope, apparently not. Apparently it's uh, 99 and there's the 1%. Runs round, gets the double. A different kill happened elsewhere at the same time. But <sighs> okay, it sort of shows you that this is... He isn't quite done, isn't quite locked in. Said that there were these sort of moments from Rykos and Nako on these rotations, on these roams that were punishing Wild before that Wild got a handle on. And here, there's Rykos. Three times, just made sure that they weren't looking at him. I mean, rough, a rough, rough. Right the location of a bomb. And I mean, this is this is the thing, right? Like we've, we've spoke about it before. Until the tactical timeout, we've seen a very aggressive end with like these runouts and jump outs, and have been able to find quite a lot of success with it. Then, while well, took their timeout, the drone game started to get back on point. They're starting to catch these players off as they tried something funky. And then they were, you know, uh, literally just just a minute or two away from from taking the whole victory out there. They had the men advantage. All they needed to do is get the extra kill inside us. Three people were roaming, I believe, at that point. And boom, Rikers goes for a jump out, gets to or run out rather, gets to and successfully turns around upside down. Now, I was curious what the Nook was going to try and achieve there. The classic was actually to sneak your way up white stairs and do some damage. Silent steps, not quite as silent as it used to be, but the smash and grab doesn't need silence. It needs a reaction from Wild. They're already in. 90 is there. Zulu is there. They've got pressure onto reading itself. The E1D is continual and dangerous. Nello's sort of talking himself and saying, look, I'm under a huge amount of pressure. We've got to try and play a bit of a retake and a catch round onto the back because, well, there was only Nello on side to side. Nako gets out Lolo. There's Nello getting the catch on Azox, keeping the trade into their favor. Rakos is hoping to catch Teb here on this rotate. How aware is Teb? Enough to stop himself around VIP, but not enough to not get the catch. The scan is up. Teb is suddenly aware of the nook. He's seen him with the scan, I think. 
because he was just uh, putting it away. He was guys. just aiming at Rikers' opportunity. This guy's ran on the back. Tep, he's got to take a fight here. The spray and the pressure is everywhere. He stops in close. Tep oh, no. somehow gets one out of it. Really shouldn't have, though. Attackers recovered the that was the best he could make out of that situation out there. He spotted out the nut behind the bar with the cardiac sensor. Realized, oh, I'm being hunted. And somehow still able to get that one kill to try and go for the, you know, the double swing at the same time. Uh, just a little bit of delay in between it. Allowing him to pick up one, turning it into a three on three. The side is not yet under control from the side of ends. They do have the diffuser again. Nako will be able to find pack bull, so that's definitely a great start to the end game of this round. They still need to get into that top floor. They still need to descend down yet another one. And Kanto is right underneath the skylight. Do they? No, no, they don't. You will find one instantly picked up though by Rikers right afterwards, leaving Nello in a 1v2. And he's having the perfect position to play this. He's right in between the both sides. I said before, Nello, he has to play these power positions. He's a backline player. And sometimes when the reliance comes onto him, if he's the one getting himself even, then it's the lockout usually for the team itself. But again, we are in that same play space of very late plant coming through the three fires onto the back of train. He's gonna see if he can rotate himself close to shotgun. Oh, it's dangerous. The C4 gets shot out. The swing of Rikos gets the end of it. Again, last late minute clutch back onto her round there from the side event. You think about how quickly they were in towards Pillar, in towards reading, and again, how late it ends. They go up one round away. And they got themselves onto a map point. They haven't been able to reach that one before. Found themselves at a 5-3 for quite long. Again, like Temp shouldn't have been able to get that one kill there to start off with. He should have been picked up before that. Still great that he did. Played that absolutely perfectly. And then, I mean, he's trying his best as well at that point. Like there's two people pressuring him. The Nitro is probably your best friend in that situation. Especially with the cover that they had, a lot of your pellets should just be eaten up and not actually reach the target. But map points, series points here for ends. We'll defend the basement. Ten seconds left. Sort of hard to gauge at this point. Whether it's going to be the swing round onto the favor because. Wild had a couple of good attacks. They had a couple of good moments of pulling things out, and it was generally in the latter half of their attacking half. However, we've now got two rounds tied together in a row, technically either side of the split here from Ents. They've been in the highest pressure environment that one of these two teams has been on, of being on the back foot and the wrong side of a match point and pulled themselves back up towards one of their own. So at this point, they are truly tested and trialed by Fired. It was the Oscar the concern at the jump out. Guys, Duffers. Assume a hit of Teb. Yep, the DMR. That looks like DMR damage. <laughs> it's like, yeah, to my calculations, that is a DMR indeed. Dad's hit him there. Attackers are playing out on the small balcony, tossing in that drone, just seeing if anything is safe. Knows about the player there, though, but Nako already just falling off, not sticking around. Of course, that, you know, due to the fact that it is kitchen, verticality Spending is going to be key. You want to open up as much as you can as the uh, attack. Ready to and if you're playing around with the defense, you just want to waste some time. You just want to waste them from having the opportunity to, Bomb you know, actually spotted. open that up as freely as they otherwise so would. Yeah, it's a sneaky camera. It's just the I couldn't even, out there if you didn't it. have the IQ, you would never see that. That looked like it was embedded in the metal. Oh, Tab embeds into the side of Nako. He's ducked underneath the window. There's a second player for support, and oh, they're just able to win out the trade, but then there's the pick back up, and Lolo, he's pre-firing. I don't know. They know there's a down player there at the minute. Oh, they found him otherwise. Impact's coming through. Trying to stop the Bugies from opening up, but very successful. Sky's looking out for drones. have been caught one too many times because of it. And they definitely seem to be aware again as an impact just flies through and he's basically shown the door like get out or we will take you out instead. 
And right now, Nello and Lola are doing a lot of work here to open up vertically, make this side completely unplayable for the defense. And you see it, they're all just layered around it. And not actually in sight. They're trying to defend the entryway. Sky turns us back at what could be the most unfortunate time here as Packle gets himself in the door. He spots the ponytail. Cannot quite get the confirm on the skies. Instead of chasing, he's throwing in a grenade right afterwards to chase it instead. Frenchy, he's going for the rotate round on the top floor. He's looking to see if he can try and retake vertical. And with 20 seconds left and them trying to get the kid isolated, suddenly they're going to find themselves in this. An absolute strike round onto the back. The trade is almost instantaneous, but Skies is coming up to offer some support. And knows where they need to put the pressure. It's on the vertical. It's absolutely flipped the script here on towards the plant. Nello, he's the only man watching this, trying to get the catch. Cannot find it on the vertical. They're rotating their way back down. He's swinging every single way as Packball confirms the plant, but he is buried in the back of the corner of the kitchen itself. Nello has to try and find a single route out here. 37 seconds for Enz, the remaining three players, just to structure themselves. But here, the strike onto the two wild players, holding out the sort of co-IGL pairing, the swing onto the Oster Shield. They've got themselves in the grenade. That's no. gonna backfire against himself! What an absolute tragedy! From pack bullet bounce back onto the shield, removed his only cover. Nello lost the cover. <laughs> and then to win the map. I could not. <laughs> not like this. That is so unfortunate. I mean, they found the one place where it was going to be able to get that safe plant out. There was no vertical challenging them there. They have the talent shield. And of course, it's going to be getting quite chaotic when you have two players pushing you there, but. That is such a painful way to go, to basically kill yourself with your own grenade and clean up the way for the defenders to get that defuse out. It wasn't even just kill yourself, it was remove the Ossa shield, the only yeah, thing as well. sort of holding on. You had the cover of the plant. You knew what he was trying to do, which was to get it to land in front of the double door. Unfortunately, not. But I'm curious to see what they say on the desk after this quick break. Ends pick up their very first points in Europe League. A very exciting thing for them. Only two because they had to do it in overtime. But what a way to end that game. <laughs> what a way to end that game. That was uh, an interesting sort of uh, trying to hold the diffuser. That was honking. I'm trying to be diplomatic here, Jack. I'm trying to find excuses oh, for no, that. Oh, no, we've replayed it straight away as oh, well. No. No. I mean, oh, he bounced off the metal <laughs> at the top. <laughs> it, 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 is, it is a great grenade, though. Like, he gets the kill with it. We don't see many grenade kills these days, and somehow we managed to see one close out that game. <laughs> it was the right idea. Uh, yeah, I mean, let's, let's be real. It was pretty smart if there wasn't a it big metal clock. bounce back at him. <laughs> yeah. It blew up in his face, quite literally. Quite but it was literally. the right idea. Yeah. But the, the, way, the way that this game played out, I think that both teams struggled to read into each other. That's what I think was the biggest thing. We knew this game was going to be even, right, Jack? Mm -hmm. We knew it was going to be close. How close, we couldn't predict. But both teams didn't seem to read into their opponents that well. I think so early on in the season, for rosters that are so new, I think the one thing that you want to see is you want to see them taking away the learnings. I think Entz particularly, showing out, starting out on attack, achieving a 3-3 split, was great. It yep. showed, you know, that they had the confidence in themselves from yesterday. And then I think they made quite a few mistakes on their defenses, if I'm being brutally honest. In their attacks too, to a certain extent. In their attacks too. And I think it was kind of a similar story for Wild, who, you know, looked like a team that had a little bit, you know, more shallow strategic depth. Again, yeah. if we are going to say exactly the same thing, is that they are quite brand new as a five, yeah. as a unit. You would kind of expect to see that. So am I surprised we went to overtime? No. Um, but I, I thought overall I was impressed with Enx apart from their defenses. I thought their defenses were a little bit too aggressive at times. Had they have just tested their execute, that would have been a very clean win in my opinion. Yeah, both sides' entry fragging ability was actually on point in their attacks. They played really, really good attacks. And I think, that, like, when you look at Cafe as a map, some teams played step one, two, three steps, basically in a row after each other. Yeah. Both of the teams had really good step ones. Really good step ones. And then after that is where it kind of like maybe communication wasn't perfect or the setup wasn't perfect. But overall, I think that the teams played quite to the level we expected. Yeah, I, I actually think it's individual things, right? Yeah. You know, we saw the Ents guys talk about stress, but stress is probably happening on the side of Wild as well. We yep. saw individual decision making. Even, you know, and, and I'm not going to throw Pat Bull under the bus. Maybe I am. Even down to that very last nade at the end, it was a stress nade that was trying to clear a situation that ultimately resulted in Pat Bull, you know? <laughs> 
uh, winning the, the game for the other team. But we saw Teb miss quite a few shots. When he was in a clutch scenario, there was a Nello here, prime example, right? Yeah. I think both of the players on uh, you know, both teams, individual players struggled a little bit with decision making and maybe the stress of the situation they're in already, even though it's two play days down the line, is kind of coming to bite them. Bit of shakes from both teams then in this regard, maybe. But of course, an important thing as well, you mentioned it on the pregame, Ends didn't win an attack in Tier 1 prior to this, yep. now they have. Yeah, they looked a lot better. It was only going to be a matter of time, right? It was just a, a fun little start, but, you know, it, it showed a lot of confidence even just yep. to start out on attack, like you said, let's bear the pain now. And they actually got a 3-3 free, free split. Maybe should have been a 4-2 split. It sh I think it should have been a 4-2 split. So they really took themselves and took control of their own faith. Now, before the game started, we had a head-to-head -head with two players that we needed some improvement from, and we kept track of that over the game. So, Fabian, if you could please just show us how these players improved over that game. Of course, I will do that for you, Anne. So, we had two players we wanted to improve over this game, which was Kantaraketti and Asox. And both of the players actually took quite a step up. Sure, Asox is still negative, but that doesn't really matter when your team wins. And everybody inside this ENDS team took a step up individually. Kanto as well. I mean, he was 2-10 before, 12, 10 today, it's a massive step up. And I think both these team or these players, they matched up against each other's teams quite well because there were both mistakes on both sides, but the players themselves, I think both of them took a massive step up and I'm really happy for them that they managed to do so. It's really good to see that indeed if we expected it from these two players, but there is a whole other player with us because we are standing here with Fresh and we have an interview with Rikers as well. Good evening, Rikers. It's good to see you. I mean, I've spoken to you quite a lot in the last few months. You've had some busy times doing a LAN in, land, uh, in uh, France, doing a LAN in Malta, an online competition. How are you feeling after all of that? Yes, hello guys, good evening. Uh, feeling a bit shaky because uh, first point in UL, but uh, it's a uh, it's good feeling. So tell me a little bit about this six-man roster, Rikos, because uh, we didn't yep. know if it was a five-man roster plus a sub, but you know we've had it, I guess, I suppose confirmed with it being a six-man roster. How's that working? Because it's a little bit different. Uh, actually, I can't answer that question. You will have to ask the coach for that one. Oh, OK, OK. Sorry. That is a bit of a shame, but um, of course you picked up your very first points in Europe League yesterday. They really didn't go that way for you. What did you change going into today? Uh, yesterday, I think we were shaky. First game for us in UL for everyone. Uh, today, we told ourselves uh, just uh, um, pick them, kill them and uh, play with confidence and uh, it worked. How come you went to Cafe then? Because obviously they played Cafe yesterday, you played Clubhouse. Was it a case that you saw them on Cafe yesterday and saw some things that you liked? Mm, we saw their game and uh, I think we we're pretty confident on Cafe. So it was a good pick for us. All right, now with this being your very first interview in Europe League, is there anything you want to say to your fans? Uh, in both language? Yeah, be my guest. Okay, so thank you guys for the support. Take Thanks, NC, to have picked us up and uh, give us the chance to come in UL. Uh, thanks, Fabian, as well, to have uh, voted us up uh, uh, for NC. And uh, in French, uh, merci de nous supporter, les gars. Continuez, uh, on va essayer de donner le meilleur de nous-mêmes sur toute la saison. Et merci. Awesome. Some very kind words to your fans and your organization and Fabian as well. Really happy to hear that. Thank you so much for your time and we hope to speak to you again soon. Thank you, guys. Bye bye. Well, that was already our very first game of today. And that means we have some more games coming mm -hmm. up, but we do need a break before that. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.